All right, if you have your Bible with you, then we'd ask you to turn to the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew chapter number 7, and we're going to begin reading in verse 13, uh, a portion from the Lord's Sermon often referred to as the Sermon on the Mount, and uh, y'all think I get lengthy sometimes, this was quite a, a long sermon, and the Lord presented His ministry, the entirety of it, really from the beginning to the end, and... Um, three chapters in the way that it's divided in your King James Bible. And um, he begins to talk about reality of redemption. And that's what we're going to look at tonight, the Lord being our helper. Gospel of Matthew chapter 7, beginning in verse 13, the Lord Jesus begins, Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate... And broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few be there that find it. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. You shall know them by their fruits." Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bringeth forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth forth not fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. Not every one that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then I will pray, profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart, depart. From me, ye that work iniquity. Dear Lord, we thank you and we praise you for another opportunity to be with thy people tonight. We thank you for this good place that you've given us to meet, Lord. And we pray that in the days ahead that you would maintain us here. Lord, we pray for our nation. We pray for our new president, God, that you would uh, uh, be, be with all of us in a mighty way. Protect our freedoms. Uh, give us the voice of you in the last day. Lord, allow us to preach your word like we never have before. We pray especially for the services over in Paris on Sunday evening. We pray these things in the sweet and the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Now again, uh, some somewhat familiar verses of Scripture. and uh, I love the divisions in the King James Bible and it makes it easy uh, for for dividing thoughts and for referencing Scripture, but always remember that none of this existed as far it was just one complete text at that time. In other words, when uh, Matthew uh, began to write this out, he didn't number the verses. He he wrote the whole picture down for for them. So just kind of remember that as uh, as you read this. So the Lord Jesus in 13 says, Enter ye in at the straight gate. Now I've heard a lot of disputations on the straight gate and that it was actually a real gate and that you had to unload your, your camel to get through there like the eye of the needle, you've heard that. And lots of different things and I, I don't know nothing about that. I can't verify that as any of it being true. But I do know what's straight and I do know what's crooked. Now, know this, the plan is, uh, the, the means of salvation is straight. It's very straight, it's very narrow. Now, we live in a modern day where everything is okay and we're all headed to the same place and we're going to have a big group hug just any moment. But you know what? The Bible says straight is the gate. Christ is. Christ, Christ. There is no other way. There's nothing adding to that. There's nothing taking from that. If you aren't saved by Christ, you simply will not be saved. And that, that is what the Bible teaches. Uh, I'll give you a little story. And again, just to show you that I, 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 
I am sometimes amazed uh, at the perplexity of things, but uh, Donna has an Amish family that she knows of. Their house burnt to the ground about two weeks ago. And they had a little eight-year-old boy about Bella's age, and for whatever reason, the house was fully engulfed. He ran back in. And they were able to drag him back out, but he was charred and burnt, and ultimately he did die. And whenever they had him outside, uh, he, uh, he's going, Dad, Daddy, help me, help me, help me. And uh, then he starts saying, Oh, God, help me, help me, help me. And he asked his mama, dad, to get it, mama and daddy to get him up on his knees so he could pray. And just shortly after that, the guy in the ER and he went out in eternity. So was he calling on God for salvation? I don't know. Um, was he calling on because of pain? I don't know. But I do know this. It is a very straight gate. It, it, it is not numerous ways. And uh, the foolishness in our government the other day when they said, Hey, woman, listen, no, no, it's a very straight gate. Now, that teaching isn't popular, but it's true. Yeah. And so he says, Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many be that go in thereat. So I want you to see the next thing, that the, the road to deception is much, low, much, much wider than the road of truth. The road of deception includes a lot of different things, even many things that go under the name of Christianity include part of this broad, broad road. What does the Bible say? That leadeth to destruction. You know where Judaism would lead, would lead to one day and still does? Destruction. Because the person of Christ is redemption, not the old Jewish law. There are many, many broad ways that leadeth to destruction. And you know what? We don't need to be timid about saying so because you know what? If I was on fire, I would to God that you would warn me, Larry, you're on fire. So why would we do anything different from right. people in such a perilous condition? Right. And so we see then that the Lord Jesus himself says, listen, there's a lot out there that's going to tell you a lie. Beware of false prophets. That same word is translated in, as preacher in many other places in the Bible. Beware of false prophets. Prophets. Listen, there are a bunch of people out there that will tell you, listen, you say the sinner's prayer, you repeat this after me, and you'll be fine. And they go the rest of their life living like dogs, uh, embellishing in sin, and the whole time believing that they are saved. You know what? You know what that is? That, 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 that's, a, that's a liar. That's someone that's selling you a bill of goods. Just be baptized and everything's going to be fine. You know what? That's a bill of goods. There, there's no veracity in it. There's no truth in that. And so we find that the Lord Jesus saw this as a critical enough issue to warn His, uh, uh, to warn his people from the Sermon on the Mount that these things were coming. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing. Now, what are they coming to? Yes, someone will come into this building and say, Now, I'm a false prophet and I want to take over. No, no. They'll come in very coy. Um, they'll come in very subtly. They'll believe all five points and then some. They're very good at what they do. Mm -hmm. One thing, they're possessed of the devil. Mm -hmm. He's an intelligent being. All right. And then the other thing is, this wouldn't be their first rodeo. And, and so he says these people are out there and they're, they, 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 they want to bring you down. They're ravening wolves. And, and so we find then as uh, the Lord is giving them fair warning, don't believe everybody that comes your way. Beware of us prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly beneath the disguise they are, they are ravening wolves. You shall know them by their fruits. Now, it gets two things in here, and a third one, too, that most people miss. First of all, apple trees have apples on them. 
Lemon trees have lemons on them. And peach trees, like the one in the corner of the lot, have peaches on them. And we can depend on that for at least now. And listen, I'll just give you an example, and I'm not going to use any names, but I saw this other day on Facebook. This, this boy I knew was supposed to be a Southern Baptist preacher. Now, I saw him the other day baptizing a woman, I guess in a creek or in a baptistry, and he had on his robe and a big crucifix right here. Now, what would you think? Does that look like Baptist people to you, Jared? It didn't to me. You know what it looked like to me? It looked like Mama. And, and, and so, I didn't say anything. I just kept scrolling. But you know what? That's a piece of fruit, is it not? That's a piece of fruit that I need to think. Keep in the back of mind somewhere, you know, that didn't add up. That didn't go with it. We need to understand. And the biggest fear, you know, I could have I could have really blam blam him and say, blah, 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 blah. That ain't my place. My place is to say, you know what? That ain't right. And just keep going. Yeah. That's for my own benefit. That's for my own understanding. And if somebody comes to me and say, well, what about brother so and so? Then I can say, you know what? You need to watch it. You need to be careful. Because this and this is what I've seen for myself. And, and so we need to then to, to look at the fruits of an individual's life and, and, and over the whole thing, over the extension of their whole life, not just one instance. We shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Now, you think of what he's asking, and we certainly know about grapes. I don't know much about figs myself, but, but grapes come on the vine, and you, you gather a grape from the vine, and apparently you, gra you gather a fig from a thorn tree. That's, the, I mean, that's what I'm taking from this text, right? And it's still that way. I also want you to see that he said... Yeah. Look. Um, be fruit inspectors. See what see what's there. Now the most difficult thing of this job is self-examination. What kind of fruit are you growing? What are you producing? What do you look like? Well, how do you present? Because it's very easy to criticize other people, but it's uh, much more difficult when we do a self-exam and realize, hey, which fruit am I producing? Verse 17. Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. Very basic, very simple to understand. Now, this is how we get messed up as, as very simplistic beings. You know, when the Lord God called us little lambs, He wasn't being complimentary. Lambs are stupid. Now, I guess probably everybody, but maybe uh, Brother Kenny and Sister Abigail have heard this. When I was in school at Martin, we got to dissect a brain. And believe it or not, as far as shape and, and, and weight... A lamb's brain is about, a grown lamb is about the same size as a human being. And uh, you had to tell them the, abnorm the abnormalities when you got your brain. And every one of them had this huge spot on the frontal lobe of their brains. Every one of the, our, our, our brains that we had there in the lab. Now, Miss Barry, my anatomy teacher, she's going by each table. She got to my table and says, Larry, what is that? And I said, well, it's some kind of injury or they had a stroke. And she said, sheep don't have strokes. And I said, well, then he had some kind of blunt force trauma. And she says, you're right. And she says, when they slaughter sheep so that they don't lose any of the meat, or any of the coat, because it's valuable too. All they do is put the sheep in the line, they walk up, they bam them in the head, the sheep dies, they go on, and you know what? The next little stupid sheep walks right in behind it and gets his whack. 
So don't think that that's a compliment when the Lord said that, that, uh, that we were as little sheep. It, it, it really, it, it certainly puts us where we are, but it's not a compliment either. So what, and, and so he's, as he's describing this here, he's, uh, he says that you're going to bring forth one or the other, good or evil, good or evil. Now, our stupidity in our mind, like I said, that we're so stupid as sheep, we think that it's very easy to tell that. Somebody stabbing someone to death, you say, well, that's evil. Real easy, right? Well, let's put it this way. One of my girls, somebody, and uh, I come in on somebody doing something to my girls, you know what? I may be the one stabbing. And if someone did something wrong to my girls, uh, you know what? I don't think it's wrong. Right. You see what I'm saying? Amen. So you can't just look at it and say, gee, Larry's a horrible person. He, he stabbed this predator to death because he was with his girls. No, no. So you have to look a little deeper than just saying this and this. This and this. What circumstances were they operating in? Now, supposedly one of the best evangelists that ever lived in our country, Billy Graham, I will, I will beg to differ again and again and Amen. again. But, I, and this shows me that he was a wolf. You come down and they have them big crusades and all the junk that goes with them. And they come down and said, how did you grow up? Well, I'm Catholic. Well, you need to go down there. Well, I, I grew up Pentecostal. Well, you need to go over here. What kind of help does that give somebody? Right. Give them the gospel. Right. Tell them what the truth is. You know what? That's a whole lot better fruit than if Billy Graham was found with a gun. You see what I'm saying? And, and, and so we, we as the Lord's people, we need to understand what kind of fruit uh, we're looking at and what situation is the fruit from. Then, this is the one no one ever preaches on, uh, verse 19. So we know a good fruit and we know a bad fruit. Every tree that bringeth forth not fruit. So, you know what? I, I think many times this is very much like the one that went, took his one coin and buried it in the ground and hid it from everybody else. Listen, these trees didn't have nothing. They didn't have anything bad. They didn't have any good. They had nothing. And I want you to see how they ended up as well. You know, somebody that never does nothing, never broken hearted by the word of God, never moved, never moved to a blessing, never moved to tears about the goodness of God, I don't have much confidence in them. You know why? Because they don't have either, do they? Neither one of them is present. No good fruit, no bad fruit. No fruit, period. You know, you know what that is called in women? They're barren. They, 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 they don't have any. You know what? I'll say one thing about evil fruit. At least you know it's there. Someone that's barren, you, you don't know if they're good or bad or somewhere in between. And, and so the Lord really warns us about three different types of individual, not just two. Verse 20, Wherefore by their fruits ye shall know them. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Now, here's the thing you have to worry about. Not everyone that's saved, that's why, listen, the worst thing you can enter into is some kind of little sinner's prayer of foolishness and, and be deceived in that way. Because you know what? Saying, Lord, Lord, does not make you redeemed. Being pleasing to mom and daddy and going on with a little set of established facts to please mother and daddy that doesn't take you home to be with the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we find that many things, what we just simply need to do, do you have something real or not? Because just like just because you talk good talk and you know and, and you know a great deal about the Bible does not make you redeemed. People don't like that, but it's a very true, a very true reality, is it not? In other words, I can preach a real good sermon. 
and be lost as a goose in a hailstorm. If you don't believe that, ask Balaam's ass. If you don't, if you don't believe that, ask uh, Saul. I personally, it's took me a long many years to come to this, but I believe Saul was an infidel from the beginning. And he preached some good sermons. But he just wasn't God's man. Right. Right? Very sobering, isn't it? It's a very much a reality that we have to deal with that either you are or you're not. You know what I think the biggest thing with this stupidity of gender equality? It takes away if you are or you're not, doesn't yeah. it? You know what? I'm a man because God made me that way. Right. And I do. I take estrogen and all that stupidity. And I may, I may look like a woman, but you know what? I'll still be a man. Right? Same goes with women. So, so we find then, which are you? Who do you really belong to? What, what is your trusting of grace? Where do you lie out there? Because the Bible says you can't be deceived. He says, some will say, Lord, Lord. Yes, that's right. Depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never yeah. knew you. Very sobering words that, that people that will die and go out in eternity thinking all is well and come to the point. And, and you think about this. Not knowing, you see, when everybody knows, knows God, no, no. They know about a God, but they don't know God. You know, I fully believe this. Eventually, if you're genuinely, genuinely saved, you'll see his true character. People that tell you that God's hoping you will do something, listen, I put a question mark to them. I really do. I've never, got, and I've never seen God hope to do anything that he didn't accomplish. Have you? Have you? I'd hate to go out in her attorney for the whole soul, wouldn't you? I, I, I would have to. I would hate to go out in, in, into eternity for a maybe. And, and so we find then that the Lord was very clear with them that we can, as little little finite nothings, be deceived. Verse twenty-two again. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord. Have we not prophesied or preached in thy name? And in thy name cast out devils, and he and in thy name done many wonderful works. Now, I, I just for a second I want to I want to focus uh, on casting out devils. Because man, that is showmanship, is it not? And listen, when I say that, let me say this, I'm not saying it that it is outside the realm of possibility. But, listen, a lot of people, all that mess is, is for show. Now, with that said, two things come into here. The reality of demonic possession, right? And the reality of fake people dealing with demons. Now, all of you know my brother. So, but he ain't got to meet James yet. So I went to James and said, James, will you do this for me? Me and Don, the kids ain't got nothing to eat right now. I will guarantee you, James would go and be sure that we had plenty to eat. Now, how different in the legion that fell from glory if one devil went to another and said, could you do this for me? It certainly would. Uh, you remember the accusation they made against the Lord? It's really what happens in situations like this, but it's flipped around. He casteth out devils by the prince of devils. That was their accus yeah. accusation against Jesus. Well, see, the real thing is that's what they were doing. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? And, and, and so, <laughs> so we find then it can't be simply evaluated by, you know what, you go some of them crazy Benny Hinn things and, and people raising from the dead trying to repeat the, the apostolic gifts. Listen, you know what? <laughs> that would be impressive to see. Now, if you, if you think anything else, you're lying to me. Now, I, I've been a nurse for a lot of years, and I've seen people resuscitated. 
I have resuscitated people myself and been successful. Blessed be the name of the Lord. But this is what I'll say. The life never left them where it wasn't happening. Yes. You see what I'm saying? But you have people today where the life is gone. And you know what? There will be people that raise them up again because the devil's a mocker. He wants to replicate Christ in every way possible. And, and there will be individuals to raise up the dead again. I, I, will, I will bet the farm on that. You'll, you'll see that replicated in, in my lifetime. And, and so we see then that we can't just look at something and say, oh yes, this is bad. Oh yes, this is good. And because they have a successful ministry, oh yeah, they're right in there for Christ. Now, uh, you know, I knew a preacher some years ago, and I'm not going to say his name, but most of you would know him, that he was a wonderful preacher gifted in the Word of, word of God. And all of, a sudden, all of a sudden, one day, he realized he didn't even belong to Christ. You know what? There wasn't no way I could tell him. I, I was flabbergasted. I was amazed. And so we find then... We need to be careful about ourselves. Yeah. We need to be careful about ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know, when I came to the doctrines of grace, I had to be careful about myself. Now, nobody in this room, I don't know if my mother and father-in-law were ever there, but I know my wife for sure was there. I could be Ebenezer Scrooge for you right now. And I could make you believe that I was right there with you. But that didn't make it so. I can preach and preach and preach, but it simply doesn't make it so. So the reality of deception is something that God's people must deal with and must address if we're to know the truth of the matter. So he says, yeah, there's false people out there. This will be the end result of them. And verse 23, and I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, uh, from me, ye that work iniquity. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them. Now, what is he telling you to do? Watch. You know, the best thing you can do is watch yourself. Uh, and, and if you're not careful in your watching, you'll miss something. Now, I don't shave every day. I shave this part and this part three times a week unfailingly. Because, and I wouldn't do that if I didn't do like this because to me, shaving is a waste of time. Uh, but one day I got in there and, I, you know, when you get to having to do this to shave smoothly, you know you're old. When you got to straighten it back out. And one day I went in there and I got my razor out and I was about ready to shave and I realized my daddy was looking back at me. And uh, I was like, you know what? I'm old. Uh, and uh, I'm like, when did this happen? You know how it happened? Bit by bit by bit. See, the best thing you can do is take a good self-inventory <laughs> very frequently. Very, very frequently and be certain that you have what you think you have. And, and so the Lord Jesus warns them, hey, this is the situation. Verse 24, therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, man, Baptists hate that, do they not? And doeth them, I will liken him, the one that says it and does it, I will liken unto him a wise man that built his house upon the rock. But upon a rock, excuse me. So, um, what's your house built on? Your ideas about redemption. Your ideas about salvation. Your, your idea about the holiness of God and the evilness of man, what are they built on? And you say, well, they're built on a rock. Well, glory be to God, because you know what? The storm's coming. 
the storm's coming. And you know, I always think of the storm as like some of the stuff we've experienced recently uh, with the government. Listen, that's not a storm. That's not a storm, that's part of life. A storm is this. When you look at those little ones back there, and uh, no trouble, no one trouble. Y'all remember when Aaron was hurt? Was that not a storm, Jared? See, that's when you begin to count things, is it not? I remember when Adam was so sick and we had gone from place to place at just unbelievably high fevers. I always got tickled at Donna on this one. Uh, we were painting our front room in the apartment one day. And, uh, and he was probably six months old or something. And I went over and felt it. It was just hot, hot. So I went and got a thermometer, and it's 104.5. I said, we got to get this young man to the doctor, to the hospital. And Donna, true to herself, said, do you think we could finish the painting first? <laughs> and, <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> but we got him over there. Finally had a doctor find a pediatrician with some sense and that would listen to us. And the first thing was it's probably spine meningitis. Mm. And you talk about that in some air in these cells. It'll do it. See, that's when you're tested. That's when you know. And you know what? In times like that is when we realize what you you know what? You may just have a car house. Because we like things to go well, do we not? One, two, three, four. Now, when you work about as many military people as I do, man, it is grained in them, and when it don't happen, you know what? It breaks loose. But see, sometimes it goes two, four, three. And sometimes it goes four, one, six. And everything falls apart. So that's when you'll find out, are you built on the rock? already built on the sand. And we see that the result is how we measure that. Mm -hmm. It either falls or it stays. It either stays put or it goes away. How many people remember our young pastor before Brother Downs at Bunk Smells Church? It was a spitfire, was it not? I'm not going to say his name where Broadcasting. 17 year old boy when he candidated 18 when the church called him. Y'all remember that? You can't find him with radar now. Left his wife, took up with another woman at about 30. Started drinking. Just in our eyes, would have threw his life away. No, no. The storm came. The storm came in the image of a woman. The storm came and broke his house down. And you know why? It wasn't built on the rock. Are you prepared for the storm? How's it going to come from you? I don't know. I guess the Lord knows how, and the devil too, I guess, knows how I am with my children. And so probably it would easily come that way for me. But what about my wife? You know where he'll get you where you least expect it? Where you least expect it. He'll send a problem your way. And it will attack you. Wouldn't it be a horrible thing to find out when the trial comes, the only time you find out you haven't got nothing? Well, where's she at and still? When you stand before him and he's like, who are you? <laughs> I never even knew you. Now, when you think about that, we know that God is omnipotent. I mean, omniscient and knows all things, right? He knows me. And you know what? This is the reality. He knew Judas. He did, didn't he? He, he said, that's the deceiver. Mm -hmm. But, he didn't know him as a son. He didn't know him as a redeeming one. So when he said, I, I never knew you, he didn't mean he didn't know, he didn't mean that he didn't know the person existed. He didn't know him like this. He didn't know him in redemption. He didn't know him in salvation. Because so someone can study that book and know everything. But it don't mean they know Christ. 
Now, I never read it all, I don't guess. I felt like I was sometimes. But me and Donna's med surge book in college was 2,500 pages long. And I learned a lot from it. But you know what? That didn't make me a nurse, did it? Even when I got my license in my hands, it didn't make me a good nurse, did it? So you can say a lot, and you can present a lot, but that don't mean you necessarily know him. Mm -hmm. Listen, we're, we're in a mess. Um, you know a good barometer of where you're at is how your prayer life is. That's all, I, I can tell when I'm getting cold and indifferent because when I, when I meet the Lord in prayer, it's just like, it's just like sin. You ever prayed like that? Just as dry as a saltine cracker. Just going through the motions. Just saying the same old stuff you always say. You know what? If you don't experience the person of the Lord in prayer, something's wrong. And this evening, if you don't even know what I'm talking about, something's majorly wrong. You know what Paul wanted for us? To be able to testify of that hope that lives within us. Can you do that? I mean, you don't have to give this big oration. Uh, I was a 12 year old boy when the Lord saved me. I've done more after I was saved but than before when the Lord, before the Lord saved me. But I'll tell you what, He made a new creature out of this old boy. And I can tell you that. That's the kind of thing you need to cling to. If you don't have that, dear friend, you probably have nothing. Uh, what are you trusting for redemption? When, it, when it's all said and done, if President Trump is in the White House, or President Biden is in the hospital, I mean, in the White House, does anything else really matter? One question to ask yourself, do I indeed know the Lord Jesus Christ? Mm -hmm. wow. That's it. Yeah.